Okay, so today we're going to go over section 9.3, which is geometric series. And so to be a geometric series, the definition is that you have to multiply or divide by some common ratio, which we label R. All right, so if I look at example 1A, I'm given the sequence 2, 4, 8, 16. I'm asked to determine if it's a geometric sequence. So to determine if it's a geometric sequence, we have to find our common ratio to get from our first term to our second term, etc. So they're all times 2. And so since they're all times 2, that's our common ratio. And so then, yes, this would be a geometric sequence. This is the first part of what you're doing. So if I do the same thing for 12, 36, 108, 324, I have to find my common ratio to determine if it's a geometric sequence. So they're all times 3. So 3 is my ratio. And then I would say that yes, this is a geometric sequence. Okay. Second part of what we're going to look at today is how to find the nth term of a geometric series. Okay, so for a sub n, a sub n the nth term of a geometric series. It's equal to a sub 1, which is your first term, times r, which is your common ratio, to the n minus 1 exponent, and n's the term you're looking for. You did go over this yesterday. Okay. So I can just skip the next examples and move on? Okay. He's better than me, you said yesterday, so what's that make me? Okay. Yeah. Can I move on or you got this? Oh, okay. Alright, so if I look at 3a, I'm asked to find the 15th term when my first term is 20 and my common ratio is 1.05. Okay, so I know that n is the term we're looking for, so 15 is going to be my n. So if I use the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1, then I know that I'm finding a sub 15, my 15th term, which is equal to my a sub 1, which is 20, times my common ratio, which is 1.05, to the 20, or 15 minus 1 exponent. So if I simplify, 15 minus 1 is 14. So then, what's 1.05 to the 14th power times 20? That's what you have to figure out. So my 15th term would be 39.6. Okay. If I do the same thing for 4a, I'm asked to find my 12th term of the sequence 5, 15, 45, etc. So I know that n is the term we're looking for, so n is 12. I know that a sub 1 is your first term, so my a sub 1 is 5. And then to find my common ratio, to get from 5 to 15, I multiply by 3. 
So 3 is my common ratio. Okay, so if I plug all that in, I'm finding my 12th term, starting at 5, multiplying by 3 to the 12 minus 1. And 12 minus 1 is 11. So what is 3 to the 11th times 5? So 885,735. Okay, so that's the first half of what you're doing today. The second half of what you're doing today is finding sums of geometric sequences in series. And there's two different sums. There's the sum of a finite series where you actually are ending at a number. And then we'll look at the sum of an infinite series that goes on to infinity. So. I don't know when it's supposed to rain next. No. Nope. Okay, so a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so I'm asked to find the sum from 1 to 12 of 4 times 0 0.3 to the i minus 1. I know that I'm going to use the formula a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. a sub 1 is a number in front. n is your ending number. And 0 0.3 is your common ratio. So if I plug all that in, I get 4 times 1 minus 0 0.3 to the 12th power divided by 1 minus 0 0.3. Okay, well, 1 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7. What's 1 minus 0 0.3 to the 12th power? Point nine 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 nine. Point nine nine. Okay, so what's 4 times 0.99 divided by 0 0.7? Um, 5.66. 5.66? Okay. So your sum would be 5.66? Okay, so they do the same thing for 6b. I'm going from 1 to 7, finding the sum from 1 to 7 of 2i to the minus 1. Okay, since I don't have a number out front here, my a sub 1 is just equal to 1. n is the number you're ending at. And r is equal to 2 then. If I plug that in, I get 1 times 1 minus 2 to the 7th 
divided by 1 minus 2. Okay, well, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. What's 1 minus 2 to the 7th? Okay, so what's 1 times negative 127 divided by negative 1? 127. Very good. So your sum would be 127. Okay. So that's what you do when you're finding the sum of a finite series where you're ending a number. If you're ending in infinity, then you need to find the sum of an infinite series. of an infinite series, you use the formula a sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. Okay. So if I look at example 7a, I'm finding my sum from 0 to infinity of 4 times 0 0.6i. So a sub 1 is 4, r is 0 0.6. And my formula is a sub 1 divided by r or 1 minus r. So if I plug everything in, I get 4 divided by 1 minus 0 0.6. Well, 1 minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.4. So I get 4 divided by 0 0.4. Excuse me, what? So the sum of your infinite series would be 10. Alright, I do the same thing for the sum from 0 to infinity of 5 times 1 half to the i. I'm going to use the same formula, a sub 1 over 1 minus r. a sub 1 is 5, r is 1 half. So if I plug those in, I get 5 divided by 1 minus 1 half, which gives me 5 divided by 1 half. And what's 5 divided by 1 half? 10. So that sum is also 10. Okay, so you guys are going to work on page 667, 17 through... 28, 35 through 43, 67 through 74, 93 through 98.